Good morning guys. Today I'm over here at Premium Coach Group in Gilbert, Arizona and I'm doing an inspection on this 2018 Fleetwood Discovery. Is it a Fleetwood? Is it a uh, Rev Group? Who's to know? Now we're just going to do a roof inspection on this one. Uh, I know I do a lot of roof inspections with you guys. Uh, truthfully I kind of like these because they're really easy videos to put together. So I appreciate you guys taking time to, to look at them with me. It's also pretty good to see if anything changes from year to year on these builds. But let me get the ladder, we'll get up on the roof, and I'm going to show you one thing that's already concerning me. Now this is a three-year-old coach, so I don't expect to see too much unless it's actual physical damage. Now you should be inspecting your roofs at least once a year, twice a year is better. But let's see what we find up on top of there. I do like to use the existing ladders if they do have provide one that way I can test to make sure the mounts are good. We'll get up on here. And this is a Discovery. And Discovery used to be a kind of a mid-level diesel pusher, but I think uh, they've decided to make them a, a Highline unit now. You can see they have uh, side balance panels for the box to, because they have a box on and on the other side. So this is a pretty high-end coach with a roof like this. So this roof is going to be a one-piece gel coat fiberglass roof. That means it's molded fiberglass and sheet fiberglass. That's very, very strong. I like they're using self-leveling die core sealant on the roof and all the components. Uh, it stays a little bit tacky in the sun and it'll try to attract dirt. So it's not uncommon for it to be dirty like that. Before you were to reseal, you need to clean with uh, soap and water and then usually either rubbing alcohol or mineral spirits to get through all that dirt layer and then you can put new sealant on there once all that solvent cures so on the rear cap right here this is a fiberglass rear cap uh, i don't see any real issues they painted the the die core at the factory and so it's not uncommon for the paint to crack but that's not the die core cracking that's just the paint cracking i don't see any issues with that, that base it's a little bit of stress cracking right there. That's just going to be cosmetic. It's a pretty nice size solar array on here. I don't know if it's factory or not. I, I would guess it's not. It's just based on the wiring that I'm seeing. And factories don't normally use these 5 16 screws normally. We'll take a look at all of those mounts. I'm not seeing any cracking on the sealant. We look pretty good there. It's gonna kind of wish they would have given me a little bit more uh, room to walk up here on this side. Let's go ahead and peer over the side. Now on this radius right there, that's part of the fiberglass roof. So it's pretty strong. It's incorporated into the roof, so it's seamless from the roof to the radius. That slide out topper looks pretty good. I don't see anything wrong with it. And the sealant on the radius looks really good too. Okay, we'll just walk along right here without dying. Now I didn't explain it very well, but this right there, that box right there, and that one right over there, they don't do anything that's just decorative so that this box awning doesn't look weird sticking up on the roof by itself. So none of those are functional, it's just decorative. Alright, so check to make sure the AC root is not loose to the roof. Found an extra screw up here. I guess they don't probably need that anymore. We'll go on this side. Not seeing an issue with the sealant on this side. Now when it comes to fiberglass roofs and all roofs, you do need to wash and wax them. Uh, so there's a fiberglass roof. I just normally recommend like a, a Meguiar's wash and wax uh, protection on the roof from uh, UV. Let's see, we'll do uh, our check right here. All we have to do is put my hand. Look how white my hand is. Do you guys see that? Let me clean it off. We'll do it again. I'll just do it with the other hand. So my hand's clean. Look how white it is. That's, that's paint oxidation. That's why you got to wash and wax these roofs. It's vital. Come on guys, we can do better. Uh, see anything wrong with that? 
Now, these are the roof vent covers that are a little bit better because you can actually take these off to inspect a lot easier than the ones that are put down with nuts. I do like the ones that just have two pins and then there's a hinge so you don't have to take off four of them. But you can see they're quite dirty under there. But I wouldn't be able to do this with your standard Max Air roof vent that it's down with a nut because those things always break when you take them apart. The skylight. Hmm. Don't really like the gapping right there. I've never liked these skylights or the material that they're made out of. They do tend to crack a little bit. I don't like them because their ceiling surface is very, very narrow. Sometimes the bottom edge of this is actually proud of this flange and so it's really only this tiny little edge that's actually sealing. So I would have liked to have seen lap sealant all the way around right there. But that's just me I guess. There's a little bit of stress cracking in the roof itself. Again that's just going to be cosmetic and nothing really to worry about. Alright so yeah if you're going to get vent covers make sure they're easy to come off. It is again like where I like those Max Fan Deluxes because the vent cover is built into the vent. You don't have to worry about taking that off again. So this has three ACs on it. We'll check this one. Now Fleetwood's uh, mounting of these ACs is a little bit strange. You can see all the sealant right here on the flange because it is kind of through bolted from the top down. Uh, it's not ideal. I don't really like it. And then they hide the controllers in the cabinet above the driver's seat. It's all very confusing. You don't know where to look. It looks like maybe somebody resealed these at some point, but we're looking pretty good. So this looks like the factory original sealant, and this looks like Dicor on top of it. That looks like the factory original solar panel right there. That one I'll buy. Sealant looks pretty good on it. This roof's very, very strong. It's a good news. I'm a little surprised that you can kind of see underneath the awning there but there's not a lot of space on the uh, little balance panels I mean I guess water could get out but if you had snow and ice that could theoretically dam up pretty well right there yeah you got a big opening back there but you don't have one right there so yeah if you were parked downhill you could get water and ice stuck on here pretty easily I'm a desert rat, so I don't think about snow and ice too much, but from my understanding, the rest of the uh, the world, at least the rest of North America, has to worry about snow and ice a little bit more than we do. If you look over the edge right here, it's dirty. That's where all the water is actually feeling to come off the AC, but I, I would have thought they would have had condensate drains on this, but it doesn't look like they do. That's the trail from the condensate from the AC. See it on that one too. And over there. That's kind of surprising. I would have thought something this nice would have had condensate drains. Alright, this slide out topper, you can see the water's been pooling right there. It's not uncommon on these long slide outs. So periodically, if you're in rain, you should bring the slide out in periodically to drain off the water off the top of the slide out. You can see it's uh, got a little bit of wrinkles in it, but I don't see anything else really wrong with the slide out topper. Very nice. Now come to this AC. This one does not feel loose either. Definitely have enough sealant there. They changed out the wine guard satellite that was up here before and put a king control tailgater and a king branded TV antenna. Sealant looks fantastic on that. They didn't see they definitely didn't spare the sealant on this one either. One thing I did notice that I'm a little concerned about is awning. You can kind of see, this is the main awning. Back there, it's closed all the way up, but up here, it's open. Usually the only way for a Gerard awning or a box awning to come in crooked is if the fabric is bunched up on one side. So, hmm, I have to make a note of that. It's, it's really not good for the awning to drive down the road like that. It's hard on the arms and everything. It's probably loud too inside. See, so you should be able to see that edge folded over a little bit. You wouldn't think that would do it, but that little bit of fold is what keeps the awning from going up square. 
So this slide out topper again is pretty long. You can see it's been puddling water. So that's again pretty normal because like I said, these long tubes, they will deform in the middle under the weight and it'll cause the fabric to bunch up and collect water. Well, since they did it, let's go ahead and take this one off too. Alright. So yeah, pretty dirty, but sealant looks okay. Again, that's why I like having vent covers you can remove. I can't explain to you how many gross things I've seen under these. And then a lot of these you can actually see from inside if the vent lids are dirty. And it gets kind of annoying to look at that grossness. Okay, and I think guys, with that, okay. So this is the uh, Gerard or box awning that comes out. I don't see anything wrong with it. It's not loose. Come up here to the front cap. There's a transition point right here. Again, that cracking in the paint. There's nothing I'm worried about. I'll walk down, make sure the cap isn't loose. Grab that, make sure that's not loose. Look over the top. I'm not seeing any issues looking the sideline there. We'll look at the clearance lights. Look at the front cap. And look at that. Wouldn't you know it. Three years old. And the paint starting to discolor. Or the clear coat starting to give out. I don't know. Three years seems rather quickly for paint. I don't know how the industry gets away with it. Even a $3.99 discount auto body paint job should last more than three years. I don't know what the industry gets away with. It's very crazy. All right, guys, so there you go. A 2018 Fleetwood Discovery roof inspection. It looks really good. This has a one-piece fiberglass roof. Uh, they're using Dicor self-leveling sealant on it. Everything looks like it's held up pretty well. The awning looks like it's in crooked. And then that skylight right about there. I would recommend we go ahead and seal a little bit better but other than that we're looking great thanks a lot for watching guys one more thing I already said it one time in this video but do check your roofs at least once a year two times a year is even a little bit better for the two seasons uh, need to wash and wax your your roof if it's a rubber roof or a TPO roof may not wax it, but use a, uh, a liquid UV protector on it. The roof is a vital component of an RV. RVs without a roof or, or a rotten roof have zero value. It doesn't matter what's inside the rest of it. If it doesn't have a good roof, it doesn't have any value. So let's take care of the roofs, guys. You can see the factories aren't doing a great job. So there's a lot on the end user to make sure these roofs last. Bye. So this is the year 2021, it's just September, and this is a 2018. I don't know if you guys can see that, but we have checking in the sidewall. I mean, it's only slight, and I will assume that this side got parked into the sunlight, but come on, this paint's in fantastic shape. And there should not be this checking already in here. Wish I could focus in on that better. I don't know if you guys can see it a little bit in there, especially right about there. But it's also not just in the black, I did see it in the blue up there too, a little bit. Now checking isn't an uncommon thing in the industry. I just wouldn't have expected to see it in a three-year-old coach already. This is a 2018, and I thought this problem was gone. And I don't know how the industry is getting away with this. You guys really need to start complaining to the manufacturers, because I can't do anything about it. Fold it over a little bit. You wouldn't think that would do it, but that little bit of fold is what keeps the awning from going up square. Normally, if you just straighten it out and have uh, somebody guide it in, it'll reform itself. Sometimes you'll actually have to get an iron and replete it, or iron out that wrinkle. That's how the phrasing works, right? Okay, so a 2018 Fleetwood Discovery diesel pusher. This one's in good shape. Go inside. It does have a solid tile floor, and this is not stone, this is ceramic. Get that beautiful interior shot as we flip around. 
So both uh, captain's chairs are in great shape. This has three cameras, side, two side cameras and a rear camera. Navigation, DVD, CD player, hydraulic leveling, uh, engine braking, and of course, all the standard fares on a diesel pusher. Now behind the passenger seat is the residential refrigerator. This does have a double induction stove top. Drawer dishwasher, convection oven microwave right above. This beautiful glass and ceramic backsplash. And of course the countertops are solid surface Corian countertops. Asymmetrical kitchen sink with pull out faucet. There are three slide outs, two in the front. So this is a slide out. And over here is another slide out. This dinette does pull out, but does not turn into a bed. Unlock it and pull it out. That'll sit a few more people there. Now this sofa extends out and turns it into a bed. It has a simple jackknife, just like that. Maybe not the most comfortable bed, but pretty good. That gets folded up for transport. Pushing off that one underneath, and you just slide it in. The second sofa, that also turns into a bed. It's much more like a sleeper sofa, this section pulls out. It has an air mattress on it though. You have your main TV right there, great big huge TV, and then your over the road TV is right there for driving down the road. There's only one bathroom, it's a mid coach bath. So you have your gravity toilet right there, ample linen closet, a very nice angle shower, with fiberglass surround, and then its own vanity seat. So pocket door right there, close up the bedroom. And here's where the last slide out is. On this king size bed, this is a slide out that extends out. This is a king size bed and there is storage underneath. You can see it right there. Really big closet. It is technically cedar lined. Stack washer dryers right behind the doors right there. And of course, what would an RV be without another TV? That RV comes complete with a stacker trailer. I don't have the key to that, so I can't show you what it's like inside there, but that does come with it.